Roll of Swart Roll of Swart June 1, 1634, May 30. 1715 was a landowner, scout slash magistrate, early settler of New Netherland, and the founder of Kingston, New York, and Hurley, New York. Early life. Swartwart was born in Amsterdam, Holland, 1634, the second son of Tommy Swartwart, 1607-1660. He was baptised on June 1, 1634, in the Oudkirk Church in Amsterdam. His father was a landowner who founded Midwart Midwood Flatbush, Brooklyn, in what is today New York City. Swartwart, along with his father and family, arrived in New Netherland in 1652. Swartwart lived for a short time with his father in Midwart before helping to establish Kingston, New York, during the Esopus Wars. Career In the early 1650s, a settlement was established in the area around the Esopus Creek and Ronda Creek, small tributaries of the North River halfway between New Amsterdam and Fort Orange. At the end of 1659, Rolf returned to Holland and approached the Lords Directors of the Amsterdam Chamber of the Dutch West India Company requesting that they establish a court in the area of the Esopus and appoint him as scout slash magistrate. In a letter of 16 April 1660, the Lords Directors informed Director General in New Netherland Council of their intentions to appoint Roloff Swartwout and instructed the Director General Pius de Stuyvesant to appoint him as scout as soon as Wiltwick later Kingston had a court. They also immediately sent over a letter of commission and instructions for Swartwout. Stuyvesant and his councillors responded in June 1660 by opposing the decision. The Lords Directors or Board of Directors in Amsterdam sent a swift reply on 20 September 1660 expressing their surprise at the opposition of the Director General and Council of their choice and added, We also think we have the power and authority to have our orders and commands precisely adhered. This is one of the only times the Directors overruled the Director General decision in New Netherland from Amsterdam. The court establishment in Wiltwick did not take place until May 1661. The court had both judicial and administrative tasks once created and would consist of three Shepanen and one scout as chairman of the judiciary, who would be Roloff Swartwart. This appointment completed the organisation of the first court of justice in the county of Ulster. Roloff was later appointed from 1689-90 the position of Justice of the Peace and Collector of Grand Excise of Ulster County. He was also made member of Governor Lesler's Council in war with France. Dutch Reformed Church, 1616. Roloff's second objective in visiting Holland had been to obtain a settled pastor for Esopus, and it was apparently accomplished on March 4, 1661. Thomas Chambers, Cornelius Barents and Slett, Gertrude Andries, Rolf Swartwa, Alert Haymans and Rose, and Jureen Westphal agreed in writing to give Blom the Dutch pastor a salary for the first year, to commence 9 5 1660, the sum of 700 goldens and corn, at Beaver Valuation in case his farm should fail. We promise further to put the farm in good order according to contract as soon as the land has been allotted and raised at some at the latest for the coming farming season. Second Esopus War In the hope of making a treaty with the Esopus Indians, Dutch emissaries contacted the tribe on June 5, 1663, and requested a meeting. The natives replied that it was their custom to conduct peace talks unarmed and in the open, so the gates of Wiltwick were kept open. The Esopus arrived on June 7 in great numbers many claiming to be selling produce, thereby infiltrating deep into the town as scouts. By the time word arrived that Esopus warriors had completely destroyed the neighbouring village of New Dorp, the scouts were in place around the town and began their own attack. Well armed and spread out, they took the Dutch by surprise and soon controlled much of the town, setting fire to houses and kidnapping women before they were driven out by a few of the settlers, Rioloff Swarpo being one of them. The attackers escaped and the Dutch repaired their fortifications. On June 10, Rioloff Swartwout wrote a letter to Director General Stuyvesant asking for Dutch soldier reinforcements and a collection of chronology of events. On June 16, Dutch soldiers transporting ammunition to the town were attacked on their way from Rondau Creek. The Esopus were again repelled. Throughout July, Dutch forces reconnoitred the Esopus kill. Unable to distinguish one tribe from another, they captured some traders from the Wapinga tribe, one of whom agreed to help the Dutch. He gave them information about various native forces and served as a guide in the field. In spite of his help, the Dutch were unable to make solid contact with the Esopus, who used guerrilla tactics and could disappear easily into the woods. After several unproductive skirmishes, the Dutch managed to gain the help of the Mohawk, who served as guides, interpreters and soldiers. By the end of July, the Dutch had received sufficient reinforcements to march for the Esopus' stronghold in the mountains to the north. However, their ponderous equipment made progress slow, and the terrain was difficult. Realising their disadvantage, rather than attacking the Esopus force, they burned the surrounding fields in the hope of starving them out. For the next month, scouting parties went out to set fire to the Esopus fields, but found little other combat. In early September, another Dutch force tried to engage the Esopus on their territory, this time successfully. 
the battle ended with the death of the Esopus chief, Pekunihan. The Indians fled, and the Dutch, led by Captain Martin Kreger, pillaged their fort before retreating, taking supplies and prisoners. This effectively ended the war, and a peace treaty was signed on May 16, 1664, at Forward Amsterdam. Landowner Patent On January 23, 1664 1667, Governor Francis Lovelace issued a deed of confirmation to reel off Swartwart at Walter Kingston at Esopus. On May 28, 1686, a survey was taken of 47 acres of land, part of Hurley, on the north side of Esopus, laid out for real off by Sir Air Phillips Wells. On November 12, 1697, Rialoff also petitioned for 200 acres land in Ulster County, part of the land called Wagashink. In 1707, Major Johannes Hardenberg, a merchant of Kingston, Ulster County, New York, purchased from the Nanishanese Indians for the sum of £60, 2 million acres or 3,125 square miles of land initially known as the Great Tract. In April 1708, Green Anne officially granted a patent to the same land to Hardenberg and six associates and the Great Tract became known as the Hardenberg Patent. It was bordered on the east by the watershed between the Hudson and the Delaware Rivers, on the northeast by a line drawn from the lakes and pine orchard to the head of the Delaware River, on the northwest by Lake Otseander, on the west by the Delaware River, on the south by a line leaving the Delaware River about 12 miles from north of Port Jervis and reaching the watershed by courses 45 degrees east and north 53 degrees east. On July 6, 1708, the Johannes Hardenberger and Patentee sold land in the counties of Ulster and Albany to Roloff Swartwart and eight associates. On October 19, 1708, Queen Anne officially granted the Hurley patent to the Swartwort and the eight others. On June 11, 1709, Rialoff and Associates bought an additional tract of land from Hardenburg Patent. On August 25, 1709, Rialoff and the eight Associates agreed that upon the death of one or more of the nine patentees, the lands shall not be subject to survivorship, but shall descend unto the heirs of the patentee, but no part of said land shall hereafter be divided, but in such manner. Personal Life on August 13, 1657, he married of Ian Albertson Bratt, Eva Bratt, 1633-1689, the daughter of Albert Anderson Bratt, who was the first Norwegian settler of the Americas. Bratt was the widow of Anthony de Hooges, a shareholder and bookkeeper for the Dutch West India Company and one of the first settlers, secretary assistant to Arendt van Keller and later commissary of Rentslerwick. Bratt had five children from her previous marriage, Maria de Hooges Luckermans, Anna de Hooges Hornbeck, Katrina de Hooges Richards, who became the grandmother of Henry Rutgers, namesake of Rutgers University, Johann de Hooges and Anakin de Hooges Hornbeck. Through his wife, he was the brother-in-law of Hillich Lansing Bratt, the daughter of Jerry Fredericks Lansing, who was the grandfather of Continental Congress member John Lansing Jr., the namesake of Lansing, New York and Lansing, Michigan. Together, Swartwart and his wife had eight children together, four sons, four daughters, and Tony Swartwart, who died on Thomas Swartwart, the co-founder of De Burke, New York, and the co-owner of Mackie Kimmick Patent Land Tract. And Tony Swartwart, the co-founder of Der Park, New York, and the co-owner of Mackie Kimmick Patent Land Tract. Hendrik Swartwart Lambertson, Cornelius Swartwart, Schoonhoven Eva Swartwart Dinmans, Rachel Swartwart Kip, wife of Jacob Kip, who was the founder of Kip's Bay, and daughter-in-law of Hendrik Kip Bernadus Swartwart. After Eva's death, Swartwart married Francis Lubbersitz and Andres. Swartwart died in Hurley, New York on May 30, 1715.